And here we are. We're back for Kong's Corner, everybody. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, this It's the middle of the week. It's the middle of the week, right? It's Wednesday. We're going to read some Harry Potter. We're going to do this for an hour as we do every single weekday from Monday to Friday. Welcome back. I'm happy to see a lot of you in the chat. Again, it's it's always fun to see the names pop up that uh, that pop up every single day. So if you're just tuning in, this started in the middle of the quarantine, uh, and we I just started reading Harry Potter out loud to people to distract from the quarantine. And uh, we've been going. It's uh, we're in book five right now, middle of book five, and we're only halfway through. So this is going to be pretty fun. I've never read the books before. I do not know what happens. Do not spoil it in the chat. But we have the lovely moderator Lois in the chat who's taking care of that. Uh, Mark is not here today. Mark is not here today because he, um, I think he's seeing his cousin. I think that was his cousin. Anyway, but Dexter's there. Dexter's down there. My little, uh, my little dog. Um, okay, well, a uh, couple of things. The Discord, people are still figuring it out, still understanding it. Me too, I'm going to set up different channels so it's also more clear, some guidelines on there. Um, I have a Patreon every Monday after this read. I'm going to be reading, um, what's it called, The Goldfinch, also live for certain Patreon members. And on Tuesday, we're reading short stories by The, Illust uh, the Illustrated Man by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury! And uh, that's what we're doing Monday isn't Tuesday. So if you're interested, check out. Uh, it's in the description below of the video or on, on my Instagram. And uh, let's just get started, shall we? Got, got my glasses. I got my glasses. I got my, my pink marker for, for the scar. What are we going to do today? We're going to do one of these. Oh, it worked out, didn't it? It worked out. And I also got my, my old mug back. And I, don't worry, Alicia, I'm going to use yours too. But I got some water, I got some whiskey. And uh, we're just going to get started here on this old uh, Harry Potter thing, okay? A little bit of Harry Potter. And uh, that's this I'm going to read all, all day long. Even the, in the, the, the English accents, I'm just going to keep on doing this one too. Because uh, I feel like... It's actually more of a Western than anything else in this one. So here we go. I'm here for 10 minutes. Mark's in the chat for 10 minutes. <laughs> All right. So last thing that happened was Percy wrote a very belittling and abrasive letter trying to coax Harry, uh, trying to coax Harry into be, uh, uh, no, Ron, trying to coax Ron to get away from Harry. Do not spend time with that deviant. Do not. All right, let's go. We're on page 268 if you're following along. He just finished reading the letter. Harry looked up at Ron. Well, he said, trying to sound as though he found the whole thing a joke. If you want to, uh, what is it? He checked Percy's letter. Oh, yeah, sever ties with me. I, I swear I won't get violent. <sighs> Give it back, said Ron, holding out his hand. He is... Ron said jerkily, tearing Percy's letter in half. The world's, he tore it into quarters. Biggest, he tore it into eighths. Git, or jit, I keep on forgetting which one it is. He threw the pieces into the fire. Come on, oh, who's, who's saying this? Yeah, come on, we've got to get this finished sometime before dawn, he said briskly to Harry, pulling Professor Sinestra's essay back towards him. Hermione was looking at Ron with an odd expression on her face. Oh... Give them here, she said abruptly. What? said Ron. Give them to me. I look through them and correct them, she said. Are you serious? Uh, Hermione, <laughs> you're a lifesaver, said Ron. Uh, what can I... What you can say is, we promise we'll never leave our homework this late again, she said, holding out both hands for their essays. But she looked slightly amused all the same. <laughs> thanks, a million, th thanks a million, Hermione said Harry weakly, passing over his essay and sinking back into his armchair, uh, rubbing his eyes. It was now past midnight, and the common room was... Hey, buddy. And the common room was, sorry, deserted, but, but for the three of them and Crookshanks. The only sound was that of Hermione's quill, squ scratching out sentences here and there on their, on their essays, and the ruffle of pages as she checked various facts in the reference books strewn across the table. This is uh, what the debate of GIF versus JIF has done to the word GIT. Yeah, I know. Like guitar. I said it right. I said it right the first time. Okay, good. Harry was exhausted. Oh, 
Blech. Harry was exhausted. He felt an odd, sick, empty feeling in his stomach that had nothing to do with tiredness and everything to do with a letter now curling blackly in the heart of the fire. He knew that half the people inside Hogwarts thought him strange, even mad. He knew that the Daily Prophet had been making sl uh, snide allusions to him for months. But there was something about seeing it written down like that in Percy's writing, about knowing that Percy was advising Ron to drop him and even to tell tales about him to Umbridge, that made his situation real to him as nothing else had. He had known Percy for four years had stayed in his house during the summer holidays, shared a tent with him during the Quidditch World Cup, had even be been awarded full marks by him in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament last year. Yet now, Percy thought him unbalanced and possibly violent. Uh, first live stream, John D, welcome to the first live stream. Give him a round of applause hands on there to welcome, welcome him in there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's awesome. Glad you caught up and are with us, John D. Uh, and with a surge of sympathy for his godfather, Harry thought Sirius was probably the only person he knew who could really understand how he felt at the moment, because Sirius was in the same situation. Nearly everyone in the wizarding world thought Sirius a dangerous murderer and a great Voldemort supporter, and he had to live with that knowledge for 14 years. Harry blinked. He had just seen something in the fire that could not have been there. It had flashed into sight and vanished immediately. No, it could not have been. He had imagined it because he had been thinking about Sirius. Okay, write that down, Hermione said to Ron, pushing his essay in a sheet covered in her own writing back to Ron. Then add this conclusion I've written for you. Hermione, you are honestly the most wonderful person I've ever met, said Ron weakly. And if, I, and if I'm ever rude to you again... I'll know you're, I'll know you're back to normal. Ha ha ha, nice diss, said Hermione. Harry, yours is okay, except for this bit at the end. I think you must have misheard Professor Sinastra. Europa's covered in ice, not mice. Harry? Okay, 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 wait, wait. Harry, out of all people, doesn't, <sighs> that doesn't make sense. That's just like a, a, a dumb gag she threw in there. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, John, Mark, and Dexter. Hello, Barbara, Barreto. That's a nice welcome to John. Awesome. Harry had slid off his chair onto his knees and was now crouching on the singed and threadbare heartthrug, gazing into the, into the flames. Uh, Harry, said Ron, certainly. Why are you down there? Because I've just seen Sirius's head in the fire, said Harry. He spoke quite calmly. After all, he had seen Sirius's head in this... I'm just going to move this over a bit with that. Oh, how about, how about I just shove it in front of the camera so you can't see anything? <laughs> Sirius' head in the... Uh, he, had, he spoke quite calmly. After all, he had seen Sirius's head in the fire, the pre, this very fire the previous year, and talked to it too. Oh, Dexter's digging for treasure. Oh, look at him. He's almost found it. Digging to treasure, for treasure. Dex. Yeah. Um, she gave, uh, Sirius's head, Hermione repeated. You mean like when he wanted to talk to you during the Triwizard Tournament? But he wouldn't do that now. He'd be too serious, she gasped, gazing at the fire. Ron dropped his quill. There, in the middle of the dancing flame, sat Sirius's head, long, dark hair falling around his grinning face. I was starting to think you'd go to bed before everyone else had disappeared, he said. I've been checking every hour. You've been popping into the fire every hour, Harry said, half laughing. Just for a few seconds to check if the coast was clear. But what if you'd been seen, said Hermione anxiously. Well, I think a girl in her first year by the look of her might have got a, uh, got a glimpse of me earlier, but don't worry. Sirius said hastily, as Hermione clapped a hand to her mouth. I was gone the moment she looked back at me, and I'll bet she thought I was an oddly shaped log or something. But Sirius, this is taking an awful risk, Hermione began. Ah, oh, you sound like Molly, said Sirius. This was the only way I could come up with of answering Harry's letter without resorting to a code. 
and codes are breakable. At the mention of Harry's letter, Hermione and Ron both turned to stare at him. You s you didn't say you'd written to Sirius, said Hermione accusingly. I forgot, said Harry, which was perfectly true. His meeting with Cho and the Allery had driven him mad. This actually had driven everything before it out of his mind. Don't look at le don't look at me like that, Hermione. There was no way anyone would have gotten se got secret information out of it. Was there, Sirius? No, it was very good," said Sirius, smiling. Anyway, we'd better be quick, just in case we're disturbed. Your scar. What about? Ron began, but Hermione interrupted him. We'll tell you afterwards. Go on, Sirius. Hello, Reuben, to himself. <laughs> you didn't you didn't confuse me. I, I saw your name. That, so that was a fail, Reuben. Yeah, to fix my mistakes, I've been mistyping all day. At least Discord can edit it. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Well, I know it can't be fun when it hurts, but we don't think it's anything really to worry about. It kept aching all last year, didn't it? Yeah, and Dumbledore said it happened whenever Voldemort was feeling a powerful emotion, said Harry, ignoring, as usual, Ron and Hermione's winces. So maybe he was just, I don't know, really angry or something the night I had that detention. Well, now he's, now he's back, it's bound to hurt more often, said Sirius. So you don't think it had anything to do with Umbridge touching me when I was in detention with her? Harry asked. Mm, I doubt it said Sirius. I know by her reputation, and I, I'm sure she's no Death Eater. She's foul enough to be one, said Harry darkly, and Ron and Hermione nodded vigorously in, in agreement. Yes, but the world isn't split into good people and Death Eaters, said Sirius with a wry smile. I know she's a nasty piece of work, though. You should hear Remus talk about her. Does Lupin know her? Asked asked. asked asked Harry quickly, remembering Umbridge's comments about dangerous half-breeds during her first lesson. So many messages de deleted. Hey, John, how are you? <laughs> hey, Nathan. Hi, Nathan. I'm doing well. How are you, Nathan? You're being a dumbo. Just a reminder, you two are loved, have meaning, and have value. Well, I, I know you are making a joke about it and mean it at the same time, so thank you. Thank you and screw you, Nathan. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, where were we? Does, does Lupin know her? Asked Harry quickly, remembering Umbridge's comments about dangerous half-breeds during her first lesson. No, said Sirius. But she drafted a bit of an anti-werewolf legislation two years ago that makes it almost impossible for him to get a job. Harry remembered how much shabbier Lupin looked these days, and his dislike of Umbridge deepened even further. Oh, wow. Ah, I, same here. Same here, Harry. It, she is the dumps. She is just the dumps. She is the back of a creek dumps. That's what she is. Nathan is trying to be nice. Much love, meaning value is up for a debate. There we go. I knew there was <laughs> there was some more. <laughs> Joth and moth. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. Where are we? Sorry. Yeah. What she got against werewolves? Said Hermione angrily. Scared of them, I expect said Sirius, smiling at her indignation. Apparently, she loathes part humans. She campaigned to have mer people rounded up and tag tagged last year, too. Imagine wasting your time and energy persecuting mer people when they are little toe rags like creature on the loose. <laughs> he really does like creature. Ron laughed, but Hermione looked upset. Serious, she said repro repro oh, reproachfully. Yes, honestly, if you made a bit more effort, a bit bit of an effort with creature, I'm sure he'd respond. After all, after all, you are only, you are the only member of his family he's got left. And Professor Dumbledore said. So, what are Umbridge's lessons like? Sirius interrupted. He wants none of that. Is she training you all to kill half breeds? 
Welcome, Hadassa. How did we get to the, th the thong song again? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, let me sing it again. No, said Harry, ignoring Hermione's affronted look at being cut off in a defensive creature. She's not letting us use magic at all. All we do is read the stupid textbook, said Ron. Ah, oh, well, that figures, said Sirius. Our information from inside the Ministry is that Fudge doesn't want you trained in combat. Trained in combat? replied Harry incredul incredulously. What does he think we're doing here, forming some sort of wizard army? That's exactly what he thinks you're doing, said Sirius. Or, rather, that's exactly what he's afraid Dumbledore's doing. Forming his own private army, with which he'll be able to take on the Ministry of Magic. There was a pause at this. Then Ron said, That's the most stupid thing I've heard, I've ever heard, including all the stuff that Luna Lovegood comes up with. <laughs> Come on, dude. I don't understand why Ron has such a big problem with Luna. Luna's awesome. I mean, at least from the couple of encounters I've had. Thanks, Jenny John. You are extraordinary. I love everything you've been doing. Thank you, Hadassa. Everything you've been doing has been great, too. I'm just saying that. I don't know anything you've been doing, but thank you. Thank you very much. And let me sing it again. I got that song that's stuck in my head right now, and I bet all of you do, too. Have fun with that for the rest of the evening. And let me sing it again. 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 Welcome. Okay. There was a pause at this. No, wait. So, we're being prevented from learning defense against the dark arts because Fudge is scared we'll use spells against the Ministry, said Hermione, looking furious. Yep, said Sirius. Fudge thinks Dumbledore will stop at nothing to seize power. He's getting more paranoid about Dumbledore by the day. It's a matter of time before he has Dumbledore arrested on some trumped-up charge. No, John, just no. Oh, you want some toilet time? When you gotta go, it's toilet time. It's toilet time. There you had your toilet time song. Sing it out, yeah. And everybody who's a first-timer just became a last-timer. Probably. <laughs> Probably they heard me do that. They were like, I'm out of here. This is not, my ears are not worth this. <laughs> uh, okay, back to, back to the book, John. This reminded Harry of Percy's letter. Do you know if there's going to be anything about Dumbledore and the Daily Prophet tomorrow? Ron's brother Percy reckons there will be. Mm, I don't know, said Sirius. I haven't seen anyone from the Order all weekend. They're all busy. It's just been Creature and me here. There was a definite note of bitterness in Sirius's voice. So, you haven't had any news about Hagrid either? Ah, <sighs> said Sirius. Well, he was supposed to be back by now. No one's sure what's happened to him. Then, seeing their stricken faces, he added quickly, But, but, but Dumbledore's not worried. So don't you three get yourselves in a state. I'm sure Hagrid's fine. But... He was supposed to be back by now, said Hermione in a small, anxious voice. Madame Maxine was with him. We've been in touch with her, and she says they got separated on the journey home. But there's nothing to suggest he's hurt, or, well, nothing to suggest he's not perfectly okay. Unconvinced, Harry, Ron, and Hermione exchanged worried looks. They care so much about him, and I do too. I don't know what's up with Hagrid. I miss him. He's such a good part of the books. Why take him out of the book? when he's such a good part. Maybe, maybe distance does make the heart grow fonder. Boom, that just happened. Yes, da you know, Dan, you are the toilet time king. Can I just crown Dan Spence in the chat as toilet time king? I mean, Sayer created the song, amazing. But the king of toilet time is Dan Spence because he's the one who's called it out the most often and tells it when it's, when it's happening. Oh, where were we? Okay, other page. Listen, don't go asking too many questions about Hagrid, said Sirius hastily. It'll just draw even more attention to the fact that he's not back 
and I know Dumbledore doesn't want that. Hagrid's tough. He'll be okay. And when they did not appear cheered by this, Sirius added, When's your next Hogsmeade weekend, anyway? I was thinking, we got away with a dog disguise at the station, didn't we? I, I thought I could... No, said Harry and Hermione together very loudly. Sirius, didn't you see the Daily Prophet? said Hermione anxiously. <laughs> that, said Sirius, grinning. Uh, they're always guessing where I am. They haven't really got a clue. <laughs> He's so cocky. Your hair doesn't flip that way. He sits on the porcelain throne. All hail to Dad Spence, the Toilet King. The Toilet King. He will rule with an iron plunger. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, no. They're always guessing where I am, but they haven't really got a clue. Yeah, but, but, we, but we think this time they have, said Harry. Something Malfoy said on the train made us think he knew it was you, and his father was on the platform. Sirius, you know Lucius Malfoy. So don't come up here, what, whatever you do. If Malfoy recognizes you again... All right, all right. I've got the point, said Sirius. He looked most displeased. Just an idea. Oh, you might like to get together. I would. I, I just don't want you... Chucked back in Azkaban, said Harry. There was a pause in which Sirius looked out of the fire at Harry, a crease between his sunken eyes. You're less like your father than I thought, he said finally, a definite coolness in his voice. The risk would have been what made it fun for James. Oh, that's manipulative. That is so manipulative. Look. Well... I better be going. I can hear a creature coming down the stairs, said Sirius. But Harry was sure he was lying. I'll write to tell you a time I can make it back into the fire then, shall I? If, I, if you could stand to risk it. There was a tiny pop, and the place where Sirius's head had been, had been was flickering flame once more. This is so manipulative. I, 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 didn't like, I don't like that. I, I get it, I get it. He's hurt. He's alone all the time. He needs to see people, and he, he, the only person he feels connected to is Harry. I get it, I get it. But it's still manipulative. Still manipulative. Toilet King, what is your first decree? Oh, I can't wait. I just signed for, up for the porcelain level on Dan's Patreon. Some great perks! It's <laughs> awesome, Ruben. Don't forget the golden scroll of toilet paper. Actually, these days, it doesn't have to be gold, it's already priceless. Hurt people, hurt people. Ruben's, yeah, hurt people, hurt people. That's true. Very true. Chapter 15. Oh, it's a it's a new chapter. You know, I used to do a lot of questions. I, didn't, I haven't done that in a while. So um, here's a question for you. Name a product or a service you love so much that you'd happily be that company's spokesperson and tell us why. So any kind of product or service you're like, this thing I love, I would talk about this to the public. What is that for you? Chapter 15, the Hogwarts High Inquisitor. Okay, well, you know what mine would be? Is, um, uh, you know, kin Kinder, Kinder Surprise. No, actually, no, 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 no. What, what is that bar? Oreo does it has a chocolate bar. And I cannot not buy that when I go to, a, like, when I'm in a gas station. I'm like, I have to buy this because it is so scrumptious. It is so good. It, it fills me with delight. It, it just makes me so happy. And I would be that company's spokesperson because I genuinely love it so much. That's what I would do. Chapter 15, the Hogwarts High Inquisitor. Ooh, I should stop doing that, shouldn't I? But I, then again, actually, suddenly in the chat, one said that it's actually good. It's actually good for your knuckles, so. Ah, so many different views on this. Okay, sorry. Hogwarts High Inquisitor. They'd expected to have to comb Hermione's daily profit carefully next morning to find the article Percy had mentioned in his letter. However, the departing delivery owl had ba barely cleared the top of the milk jug when Hermione let out a huge gasp and flattened the newspaper to reveal a large photograph of Dolores Umbridge, smiling widely and blinking slowly at them from beneath the headline. Ministry seeks education reform. Dolores Umbridge appointed first ever High Inquisitor. Whoa! 
That's crazy. I just had an idea too. Maybe for um, for the news sections, I can have that. Um, what do you call it? You know that ticker background. Dun, 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 dun. I'll see if I can find that that sound real quick. News ticker sound. Let's see if this is actually something that sounds good. Broadcasting sound effects. Um, news music background. I think that might be fun. L let's see if this works. You know, it's a it's a moment of brilliant inspiration. My imagination goes wild, and I just have to follow my imagination. You know. Dig this? Just a bit quieter, right? Let me know if that's the the, the right volume. Okay, we got some people talking about Nintendo, Nintendo Switch Instant Pot. <laughs> oh, hey, send me your Nintendo Switch um, number. We'll, we'll be friends. I love Car Share, Hatchet Coffee, a spokesperson for romance novels by uh, 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 BIPOC authors. I have never said that word out loud actually, because it's such a new phrase for me, BIPOC. But uh, oh, interesting. Uptron is getting compensated for all this advertising we are putting in the chat. <laughs> Just please announce yourself as Ron Burgundy. It sounds like CNN. Uh, perfect sound. Okay, here we go. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna download this and make this onto the the stream deck so that I can press a button and this comes up whenever I have to do this voice. Wait, wait. No, we're not there yet. Umbridge. High Inquisitor, said Harry darkly, darkly his half-eaten piece of toast slipping from his fingers. What does that mean? Hermione read aloud. But I'm not going to use Hermione's voice. In a surprise move last night, the Ministry of Magic passed new legislation giving itself an unprecedented level of control at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The minister has been growing une- This is in brackets. The ministry have, has been growing uneasy about going on at Hogwarts for some time, said junior assistant to the minister, Percy Weasley. He is now responding to concerns voiced by anxious parents who feel the school may be moving in a new direction that they, they do not approve of. This is not the first time in recent weeks that the minister Cornelius Fudge has used new laws to affect improvements at the wizarding school. As recently as, as 30th, 30th of August, Educational Decree Number 22 was passed to ensure that, in the event of the current headmaster being unable to provide a candidate for a teaching post, the Ministry should select an appropriate person. That's... Brackets again. That's how Dolores Umbridge came to be appointed to the teaching staff at Hogwarts, said Weasley last night. Dumbledore couldn't find anyone, so the Ministry put in Umbridge, and of course, she's been an immediate success. This works? <laughs> Wicked. A second, pause, 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 pause. She's been a what? said Harry loudly. Wait, there's more, said her Hermione grimly. Okay, I just need to understand what's happening here. Going on, they're uneasy, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the decree number 22, in the event of the current headmaster being unable to provide a candidate for a teaching post. The minute, oh, so she was not, oh, oh, okay. So she was not chosen by Dumbledore. The Minister of Magic supplied Umbridge. So she is like a spy. But okay, a question for you knowledgeable people of the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Um, and don't spoil anything, but I, I was under the impression that Hogwarts and the Minister of Magic cut ties. Right? At the end of book four. Didn't, didn't Dumbledore do that? Or what did they cut ties with? Was it just an emotional dispute or was there actually something that got separated there? Because my question is, an, oh, what kind of jurisdiction does the Minister of Magic have over Hogwarts now? If somebody can clear that up in the, in the chat, that'd be awesome. Music a bit loud though. Okay, I'll turn it down a little bit. There we go. Buy their physical copy and get a digital code copy. They didn't cut ties. Basically, Embers have been more authority in Hogwarts at, as high school. Data profit. They're just on opposite sides of the debate. Okay, so they're not. They haven't cut ties yet. It's more an emotional dispute. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Because I thought because of that emotional dispute, that meant everything got separated. That's 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 what kind of blew my mind at the end of the last book. But now I understand it better. Thank you. They can't totally cut ties. They had a disagreement though. Okay. Double fudge with the entities themselves. I don't think so. Great. Thank you. Let's keep going. 
in brackets. An immediate success. You know what I'm gonna do? This is when somebody is speaking during the newscast, and this is when it's done. Okay? Because I think it can get confusing because I'm not doing the voices during the newscast. Here we go. An immediate, an immediate success, totally rev revolutionizing the teaching of defense against the dark arts and providing the minister with on-the-ground feedback about what's really happening at Hogwarts. <laughs> I got, well, they're not even making it clear. At, oh, okay, okay. This is, okay, now I'm clear because they're doing brackets all over the place for the regular reading and for the, the actual quotes of people. So this is now regular. It is this last function that the Ministry has now formalized with the passing of edu Educational Decree Number 23, which creates the new position of Hogwarts High Inquisitor. Oh, gosh. Wow. This is an exciting new phase in the Minister's plan, plan to get the get to grips with what we saw. With, sorry. This is, a, this is an exciting new phrase, phase in the Minister's plan to get to grips with what some are calling the falling standards at Hogwarts, said Weasley. The Inquisitors will have powers to inspect her fellow educators and make sure that they are coming up to scratch. Professor Umbridge has been offered this position in addition to her own teaching post, and we are delighted to say that she has accepted. The minister's new moves have received enthusiastic support from parents of students at Hogwarts. I feel much easier in my mind now that, that uh, now that I know Dumbledore is being subjected to fair and objective evaluation," said Mr. Lucius Malfoy, 41. Of course, they went to him. S uh, you no, know, speaking from his Witcher mansion last night. Many of us, with our children's best interests at heart, have been concerned about some of Dumbledore's eccentric decisions in the last few years, and are glad to know that the minister is keeping an eye on the situation. Among those eccentric decisions are undoubtedly the, uh, the controversial staff appointments previous, previously described in the newspaper. I need some water. Okay, here we go. Among those eccentric decisions are undoubtedly the controversial staff appointments previously previously described in the newspaper, which have included the employment of werewolf Remus Lupin, half-giant Rubus Hagrid, and delusional ex-aura Mad-Eye Moody. Rumors... Uh, rumors abound, of course, that D uh, Albus Dumbledore, once supreme mugwump of the International Confeder Confer Confederation of Wizards and chief warlock of the Wizen Gamut, is no longer up to the task of managing the prestigious school of Hogwarts. I think the appointment of the Inquisitor is a first step to, to <laughs> first step towards ensuring that Hogwarts has a headmaster in whom we can go in whom we can all repose our confidence," said a minister, ministry insider last night. Wizengamot elders Griselda Marchbanks and Tiberius Ogden have resigned in protest at the introduction of the post of Inquisitor to Hogwarts. Those are people to watch out for that they're awesome. Hogwarts is a school, not an outpost of Cornelius Fudge's office, said Madame Marchbanks. This is, this is a further disgusting attempt to discredit Albus Dumbledore. For a full account of Madame Marchbanks' alleged links to subversive goblin groups, turn to page 17. The news is done. That's fun. That's fun. Therapy has changed my life. Yes, World Therapy Day. Is that the day? Awesome. I've been to therapy. It's awesome. They better keep Hagrid out. And, and if and if you have you know uh, doubts about therapy, just uh, take it from me, expert, that it's great. <laughs> that's that's the quote you can give to people. John says it's great. Mugwump. Actually, can somebody describe to me what a mugwump is? Because it says he is a supreme mugwump of the Inter International Confederation of Wizards. So c can somebody answer this? Well, unless it's answered later and it reveals something later. So unless it's, you know, maybe spoiler territory, don't please answer it. But what's a mugwump? And how is the Confederation of Wizards different from the the Ministry of Magic, or the Minister of Magic? That's what I'm curious about. In my favorite title of Pro Tip, Go to Therapy. <laughs> will you be my therapist? Carrie, of course I will be. Of course I will be. And I'll just tell you, stop it. That'll be my advice. That'll be my therapy session. It's very direct, uh, you know, and very clear. I won't be asking you any questions. You know, in fact, you don't even have to talk. You just show up and I say, stop it. That's actually from an old sketch by, uh, I forget his name. Um, Bob, Bob Hart. Is it Bob Hart? 
Look up Bob Hart. I think it's Bob Hart SNL uh, therapy. It's a fantastic sketch. Yeah, look that up. Bob Newhart, not Bob Hart, Bob Newhart. There we go. Yes, Timon. There we go. Hermione finished reading and looked across the table at the other two. So, now we know how we ended up with Umbridge. Fudge passed this educational decree and forced her on us. And now he's giving her the power to inspect the other teachers. Hermione was breathing fast and her eyes were very bright. I can't believe this. It's outrageous. I know it is, said Harry. He looked down at his right hand, clenched on the tabletop, and saw the faint white outline of the words umbrage had forced him to cut into his skin. But a grin was unfurling on Ron's face. Ooh, what can it be, Ron? What? said Harry and Hermione together, staring at him. Oh, I can't wait to see McGonagall inspected, said Ron happily. Umbridge won't know what's hit her. Well, come on said Hermione, jumping up. We better get going. If she's inspecting Bin's class, we don't want to be late. Oh, so this is so, this is really crappy. She's gonna sit in, in every class and evalu evaluate the other teachers while teaching there? This is really crappy. That's really crappy. Mad TV, oh, that's what it was. Yes, it was Mad TV. But Professor Umbridge was not inspecting their history of magic lesson, lesson or lesson. He was not inspecting her mis history of magic lesson, which was just as dull as the previous Monday. Nor was she in Snape's dungeon when they arrived for double potions, where Harry's moonstone essay was handed back to him with a large spiky black D scrawled in an upper corner. That sucks. Now, who's saying this? I have awarded you the grades you would receive if you presented this work in your owl said Snape with a smirk as he swept among them, passing their homework. <laughs> he just floats off into the ceiling. <laughs> Mugwump, Mugwump is just chief, okay? Okay, government and courts are separate as they are two different branches of power. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so... The courts is the minister of magic, but then they're not just courts. They they have, it feels like a government to me, at least, because they have so many different, the, the levels and the different offices and every, all the levels, it seemed like a government to me. So what's the difference there? I know the courts are there, but yeah, if somebody can explain the rest to me. The C Confederation of Wizards is like the UN. Oh, okay. Oh, that's very cool. That makes more sense. Gotcha. Thank you very much. That clears it up for me. Is the government. Yeah. Minister, the ministry is the government. The confederation is the UN. Gotcha. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. Snape. Yeah. As they swept among them, passing back their homework. This should give you a real realistic idea of what to expect in the examination. Snape reached the front of class and turned on his heel to face them. The general standard of this homework was abysmal. <laughs> Most of you would have failed had this been your examination. I expect to see a great deal more effort for this week's essay on the various varieties of venom antidotes or I shall have to start handing out detention to those dunces who get a D. He smirked as Malfoy sniggered and said in a carrying whisper, Some pip some people get oh wait. A Malfoy. Some people get a D. Ha! Got a D. There we go. Harry realized that Hermione was looking sideways to see what grade he had received. He slid his moonstone essay back into his bag as quickly as possible, feeling that he would rather keep that information private. Determined not to give Snape an excuse to fail him this lesson, Harry read and reread every line of instruction on the blackboard at least three times before acting on them. His strengthening solution was not precisely the clear turquoise shade of Hermione's, of Hermione's, but it was at least blue rather than pink, like Neville's. Neville's doing good. Okay, Neville's doing just as good as Harry. 
Go Neville. And he delivered a flask of it to Snape's desk at the end of the lesson with a feeling of mingled defiance and relief. Well, that wasn't as bad as last week, was it? said Hermione as they climbed the steps out of the dungeon and made their way across the entrance hall towards lunch. And the homework didn't go too badly either, did it? When neither Ron nor Harry answered, she pressed on. I mean, all right, I didn't, I didn't expect the top grade, not if he's marking to, to owl standard, but a pass is quite encouraging at this stage, wouldn't you say? Harry made a non-committal noise in his throat. <laughs> Harry, why are you, what are you doing? Just agreeing. Of course, a load can happen between now and the exam. We've got plenty of time to improve, but the grades we're getting now are sort of baseline, aren't they? Something we can build on. Next page. They sat down together at the Gryffindor table. Obviously, obviously I'd have been thrilled if I got an O. Hermione, said Ron sharply. If you want to know what grades we got, ask. I don't, I didn't mean, well, if you want to tell me, I got a P, said Ron, la ladling soup into his bowl. Happy? Well, well, that's nothing to be ashamed of, said Fred, who had just arrived at the table with Jord and Lee Jordan and was sitting down on Harry's right. Nothing wrong with a good, healthy P. But, said Hermione, doesn't P stand for, um, Poor, yeah, said Lee Jordan. Still, better than a D, isn't it? Dreadful? Harry left his, felt his face grow warm and faked a small coughing fit over his ro <laughs> roll. When he emerged from this, he was sorry to find Hermione was still in a full flow about owl grades. I just got onto nothing but these noises. Yeah, welcome, Natasha. <laughs> Forget for ourselves. That sounds like Hagrid coughing up a hairball. Not sure John knows what non-committal means. How do you mean that? I don't understand that. Lol, exactly what I was thinking about Allison. Huh? Non-committal? I don't know what that means. Maybe explain that. Explain yourself! Explain yourself! So, top grade's O for outstanding, she was saying. And then there's A. No. E, George corrected her. E for exceeds expectations. And I've always thought Fred and I should have gotten E in everything because we exceed expectations just by turning up for the exams. <laughs> they all laughed except Hermione, who plowed on. So after E, it's A for acceptable. And that's the last pass grade, isn't it? Yep, said Fred, dunking an entire roll in his soup, transferring it to his mouth and swallowing it whole. Um, and you get... P for poor, Ron raised both his arms in mock celebration, and D for dreadful. And then T, George reminded him. T, asked Hermione, looking appalled, even lower than a D. What on earth does T stand for? Troll, said George promptly. Harry laughed again, though he was not sure whether or not George was joking. It's so funny that they've been going there, it's like, I think this is their, yeah, their fifth year, and they still don't know what the letter grades mean? Come on! Really? Well, no, they're talking about the owl grades. Okay, so, okay, so this is, this is still new. But, okay, so they don't know, that's okay. But nobody has bothered to explain to them what the owl grades are. No teacher, not one of them has been like, okay, here's what it looks like. Everyone's like, what does it mean? I passed. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay. I think you can read and infer most from the text if you are already aware of such organizations as an adult when reading. Um, I, I don't know what, what, what this all means. What class do you think you would get a T in? <sighs> what class would I get a T in? It would probably be... Let me think. What class would I get a T in? It would be something... It would. Be, <sighs> I know science is really cool, but it would be, be my science class. I'm just really bad at remembering facts, you know, and uh, maybe it had to do with my teacher. Maybe it had to do with my teacher in Germany. But man, it sucked so bad. I couldn't stand it. So I'd probably get a T in that. Yeah. John, when would Jacob have told us this? It's exposition when it needs to happen. No, I know. I'm talking about the kids themselves, not us. Yeah, in the UK, we don't grade alphabetic until or exams when we are 15 or 16. Oh, crazy. Wow, cool. 
Okay, let's keep going. Harry laughed again, though he was not sure whether or not George was joking. He imagined trying to conceal from Hermione that he re received teas in all his owls and immediately, immediately resolved to work harder from now on. <laughs> you had an expected lesson then? Fred asked them. No, said Hermione at once. Have you? Just now, before lunch, said George. Charms. What was it like? said Harry and Hermione asked together. Fred shrugged. Not that bad. Umbridge just lurked in the corner making notes in a clipboard. You know that Flit you know what Flitwick's like. He treated her like a guest. Didn't seem to bother him at all. She didn't say much. Asked Alicia a couple of questions about what the classes are normally like. Alicia told her they were really good. That was it. I can't see old Fl I can't see old Flitwick getting marked down, said George. He usually gets everyone through their exams all right. Who have you got this afternoon? Fred asked Harry. Trelawney. <laughs> a tea if I ever saw one. And Umbridge herself. Well, be a good boy and keep your temper with Umbridge today, said George. Angelina, Ange Angelina, Angelina, oh, Angelina, Angelina will do her nut if you miss any more Quidditch practices. Hmm? But Harry did not have to wait for def defense against the dark arts to meet Professor Umbridge. He was pulling out his di dream diary in a seat at the very back of the shadowy divination room when Ron elbowed him, elbowed him in the ribs and, looking around, he saw Professor Umbridge emerging through the tra trapdoor in the floor. The class, which had been talking cheerily, fell silent at once. The abrupt fall in the noise level made Professor Trelawney, who had been wa wafting about handing out copies of the dream oracle, look around. Professor Trelawney and Umbridge in one room, interesting. You get an O in friendship, though, John. Hey, Nathan! <laughs> John, my niece made a magic wand out of chopstick and some hot um, glue swirled around it. Want me to send you the link? Yeah, Reuben, send me the link. Absolutely. Trelawney's inspection. Well, I love this scene. Don't don't tell me that it's an inspection. Oh, I know. Actually, no. We know it's an inspection. Sorry. I, I get really sensitive about um, spoilers. Because it's, it's a precious thing for me. It's a precious thing to discover. So, my bad. I didn't mean to... I didn't mean to lash out at you like that. Okay. Trelawney. Um, I've been wafting out and handing out copies of the Dream Oracle, looking around. Good afternoon, Professor Trelawney, said Professor Umbridge with her wide smile. You received my note, I trust, given the time and date of your inspection. Professor Trelawney nodded curtly and looked very disgruntled, turned her back on, and looking very disgruntled, turned her back on Professor Umbridge and continued to give out books. Still smiling, Professor Tre uh, Umbridge grasped the back of the nearest armchair and pulled it to the front of class so that it was a few inches behind Professor Trelawney's seat. Oh man, what a power move. She, th she then sat down, took her clipboard from her flowery bag and looked up expectantly, waiting for the class to begin. Spoiler triggers, totally. It's a joyful thing. People are joy stealers something, sometimes. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. So she's sitting right behind her. Professor Trelawney pulled her shawls tight about her with slightly trembling hands and surveyed the class through her hugely magnifying lenses. She's nervous. Trelawney's nervous. We shall be continuing our study of prophetic dreams today. I'm trying to find out what she's like when she's nervous. She said in a brave attempt at her usual mystic tones, though her voice shook slightly. Divide into pairs, please, and interpret each other's latest nighttime visions with the aid of the oracle. She made as though to sweep back to her seat, saw Professor Umbridge sitting right beside it, and immediately veered left towards Parvati and Lavender, who were already deep in discussion about Parvati's most recent dream. Harry opened his copy of the dream oracle, watching Umbridge covertly. She was already making notes on her clipboard. After a few minutes, she got to her feet and began to pace the room in Trelawney's wake, listening to her, to her conversations with students and posing questions here and there. Harry bent his head hurriedly, hurry, hurriedly over his book. The F. Umbridge, so rude. Just think comments about the book should be in the past tense. Yeah, there you go, Tash. What letter did you get in Close Up Magic? Okay. Um, 
Think of a dream, quick, he told Ron, in case the old toad comes our way. Oh, old toad comes our way. I did it last time, Ron pr protested. It's your turn. You tell me one. Oh, I don't know, said Harry desperately, who could not remember dreaming anything at all over the last few days. Uh, let's say I dreamed I was drowning Snape in my cauldron. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> That's awesome. Ron chortled as he opened his dream oracle. Okay, we've got to add your age to the date you had the dream. The numbers of letters in the subject. Would that be drowning or cauldron or Snape? It doesn't matter. Pick any of them, said Harry, chancing a glance behind him. Professor Umbridge was now standing at Professor Trelawney's at, at Professor Trelawney's shoulder, making notes while the divination teacher questioned Neville about his dream diary. What did you dream this again? Uh, what night did you dream this again? Ron said, immersed in calculations. I don't know. Last night, whenever you like, Harry told him, trying to listen to what Umbridge was saying to Professor Trelawney. They were only a table away from him. Uh, th they were only a table away from him, him and Ron now. Professor Tr Trelawney was making another note on her clipboard and Professor Trelawney was looking extremely put out. Now, said Umbridge, looking up at Trelawney, you've been in this post how long exactly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, she doesn't laugh like that. Um, Professor Trelawney scowled at her, arms crossed and shoulders hunched as though wishing to protect herself as much as possible. Oh, she's scared from the indignity of the inspection. After a slight pause in which seemed to, to decide that the question was not so offensive that she could reasonably, reasonably ignore it, she said in a deeply resentful tone, Nearly 16 years. Quite a period said Professor Umbridge, making a note on her clipboard. So, it was Professor Dumbledore who appointed you? That's right. Uh, That's right, said Professor Trelawney shortly. P Professor Umbridge made another note. And you are a great, great grand granddaughter of the celebrated seer Cassandra Trelawney? Yes, said Professor Trelawney, holding her head a little higher. Another note on the clipboard. But I think, correct me if I'm mistaken, that you were the first in your family, family since Cassandra to be, a, to be possessed of second sight. These things often skip uh, three generations, said Professor Trelawney. Professor Umbridge's toad-like smile widened. One second, I need to look at this again. So, you've been in this post, she's been teaching for 16 years, uh, Professor Dumbledore appointed her. The great great dot granddaughter of the celebrated seer Cassandra Trelawney. First in the family, since Cassandra to be. Okay, so the, so since Cassandra, she's the first to be appointed with second sight. Okay, gotcha. Just needed to know this. They, and they skip three generations usually. Professor Umbrake, toad like smile, widened. Of course, she said sweetly, making it another note. <laughs> well, if you could just predict something for me then? And she looked up inquiringly, still smiling. Professor Trelawney stiffened as though, oh damn, oh damn, she's gonna have to actually predict something now? Oh man. Okay. What's going on here in the chat? People are uh, spoiling something that and this. Just, you know, don't, don't worry about debating spoilers. Lois will take care of it, all right? Lo I, I trust Lois with just taking care of spoilers, even if it's a good joke. But you don't have to have a whole discussion around it. Just trust Lois. Okay, here we go. Harry and Ron were not the only people now watching and listening sneakily from behind their books. Most of the class were staring transfixed at Professor Trelawney as she drew herself up to her full height, her beads and bangles clinging. The inner eye does not see upon command, she said in scandalized tones. <laughs> I see, said Professor Umbridge softly, making yet another note on her clipboard. I, but, but, wait, said Professor Trelawney suddenly. <laughs> in an attempt at her usual ethereal voice, though the mystical effect 
was ruined some, somewhat by the way it was shaking with anger. Okay, anger. I, I think I do see something, something that concerns you. Why, I sense something, something dark, some grave peril. Professor Trelawney pointed a shaking finger at Professor Umbridge, who continued to smile blandly at her, eyebrows raised. I am afraid, I am afraid that you are in grave danger, Professor Trelawney finished dramatically. Jonah's doing two favorite voices right now, it's true. It is two of my favorite voices. Professor Trelawney, oh wait, um, there was a pause. Professor Umbridge surveyed Professor Trelawney. Right, she said softly, scribbling on her clipboard once more. Well, if that's really the best you can do. <laughs> she turned away, leaving Professor Trelawney standing rooted to the spot, her chest heaving. Harry caught Ron's eye and knew that Ron was thinking exactly the same as he was. They both knew that Professor Trelawney was an old fraud. But on the other hand, they loathed Umbridge so much that they felt very much on Trelawney's side, until she swooped down on, on them a few seconds later, that is. Well? No, wait, who is this? Trelawney. Well? She said, snapping her long fingers on her Harry's nose, uncharacteristically brisk. Let me see the start you've made on your dream diary, please. And by the time she had interpreted Harry's dreams at the top of her voice, all of which, even the ones that involved eating porridge, apparently foretold a gruesome and early death, he was feeling much less sympathetic towards her. I would too. All the while, Professor Umbridge stood a few feet away, making notes in the clipboard, and when the bell rang, she descended the silver ladder first and was waiting for them all when they reached their defense against the dark arts less than ten minutes later. No, wrong one. Wrong one, wrong one. Here we go. From an idiot, idiot, it's time for John's premonition. Uh, I, uh, this is my prediction here, that she is going to remove a whole bunch of pe teachers, and I hope, well, maybe Trelawney's gonna be gone, I hope not, but she's gonna remove a whole bunch of teachers, or the attempt is to remove as much teachers so they can get their Minister of Magic people in there. They're gonna try and, you know, overtake that place with as many teachers from the Minister of Magic. That's my prediction! The Giver of Joy, the Bounty Hunter of Joy Stealers. Uh, this is going to be a trash fanfic, and actually a good one is few and far between. I'm going to read some fanfic after these seven books, for sure. I cannot wait for the really bad fanfic. I, I want to read the bad ones. I'll read maybe one or two good ones, but I want to read the bad ones. Actually, uh, but that would also be a bit mean, to read the bad ones. You know, these are people writing them in their free time. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I want to. That was the best close-up yet. Yeah, good. John doing all the challenges. Uh, okay, where, where were we? She said, a few feet away, okay. She was humming and smiling to herself, Umbridge, that is. When they entered the room, Harry and Ron, wait. Oh, sorry, my, my bad. All the while, Professor Umbridge stood a few feet away, making notes on that clipboard. And when the bell rang, she descended the silver, silver ladder first and was waiting for them all when they reached their defense against the dark arts lesson 10 minutes later. Now she's teaching it. She was humming and smiling to herself when they entered the room. Harry and Ron told Hermione, who had been in arithmancy, exactly what had happened in div divination while they all took out their copies of defense, defensive magical theory. But before Hermione could ask any questions, Professor Umbridge had called them all to order and silence fell. Th th this is my getting ready. This is... <laughs> this, is this is my... There was another character who had something... Some kind of characteristic with. I can't remember who, but this is mine for her. Mm. Mm. Once away, she instructed them all with a smile. And those people who had been hopeful enough to take them out sadly returned them to their bags. As we finished chapter one. Uh, 
chapter one last lesson. I would like you all to return to page 19 today and commence chapter two, common defense theories and their divination. There will be no need to talk. Ugh, I hate her. It's fam famous for how bad it is. Do you want fanfic spoilers, genres? I don't want to risk spoiling that for you. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything that would spoil anything coming in the book. Yeah, just get rid of that, Lois. Thank you very much. Um, and I'm not looking for su suggestions yet. It'll be closer towards the end of book seven before we even get there. So don't worry about that. McGonagall has pursed lips. Yes, she does. She still sm uh, wait, wait, Oh, it's seven o'clock, but uh, let's see, let's see. Let's see how, oh, it's, it's a whole bunch. It's a whole bunch. But I'm gonna reach the end of this scene. It do, it's not the end of the scene yet, or it doesn't feel like a good ending. Still smiling, her smile, her wide, self-satisfied satisf self smile, she sat down at her desk. The class gave an audible sigh as it turned as one to page 19. Harry wondered dully whether there was enough chapters in the book to keep them reading through through all this year's lessons, and was on the point of checking the contents page when he noticed that Hermione had her hand in the air again. Professor Umbridge had noticed too, and what was more, she seemed to have worked out a strategy for just such an eventuality. Instead of trying to pretend she hadn't noticed Hermione, she got to her feet and walked around the front row of desks until they were face to face. Then she bent down and whispered so that the rest of the class could not hear. What is it this time? Miss Granger? I've already, I've already read chapter two, said Hermione. Well then, proceed to chapter three. I've read that too. I've read the whole book. By the way, this is an awesome point where she's, uh, Umber just showing some weakness. Because when you do that, she's like, she has power, so I need to counter that power. So she is showing weakness right there. Professor Umbridge blinked, but received... She's read the whole book, wow. But recovered her poise almost instantly. Well then, you should be able to tell me what Slinkheart says about counter jinxes in chapter 15. He says that counter jinxes are impro uh, improperly named, said Hermione promptly. He says counter, counter jinx is just a name people give their jinxes when they want to make them sound more acceptable. Professor Umbridge raised her eyes, her eyebrows, and Harry knew she was impressed against her will. But I disagree, Hermione continued. Oh, she is laying down the law. This is why Hermione is one of my favorite characters. Yeah, she, okay, she's like a know-it-all. Sometimes she's a bit too much. But she is powerful because she knows so much. And she, she punched out Malfoy. It's awesome. Oh, seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Thank you, health, healthcare workers. Thank you so much for what you do. I forgot completely. You're still working away. Thank you so much. You're awesome. You were awesome. Hermione is a Banff. I don't know what a Banff is. Go Hermione, go, go, go. I think every defense against the dark arts teacher you have voiced has had a different posture. It's awesome. Oh, that's good, that's good. <laughs> She's a boss. She most certainly is. Okay, we're gonna keep on going. Um, Professor Umbridge's eyebrows rose a little higher, and her gaze became distinctly colder. You disagree, she repeated. Yes, I do, said Hermione, who unlike, who, unlike Umbridge, was not whispering, but speaking in a clear, caring voice that had by now attracted the attention of the rest of the class. Mr. Slinkhart doesn't like jinxes, does he? But I think they can be very useful when they're used offensively. Oh, do you, oh, you do, do you? Said Professor Umbridge, forgetting to whisper and straightening up. Well, I'm afraid it is Mr. Slinkard's opinion, and not yours, that that matters within this classroom, Mr. Granger. But, Hermione began, that is enough! <laughs> 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 when she can't control herself, <laughs> she doesn't get angry. She gets too intensely excited. <laughs> That's what I think how she gets. 
Oh man, <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but that's how I envision her. Oh man. <laughs> she burst right there. <laughs> I, I, this is this is might be on par. <laughs> this might be on par for me with Harry ramming <laughs> ramming his face into the desk while he's just standing still. <laughs> is her bursting out in friendliness instead of anger. Oh, man. Ah, oh, your amber makes me want to hurt things and people. It's perfect. Good. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep on going. Oh, man. It, that, that, that is very funny to me. Oh, man. She walked back to the front of the class and stood before them. All the jauntiness she had shown at the beginning of the lesson gone. Miss Granger! I'm going to take five points from Gryffindor House. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there was an outbreak of muttering at this. What for? said Harry angrily. Don't you get involved. No, don't you get involved. Hermione whispered urgently to him. For disrupting my class with pointless interruptions, said Professor Umbridge smoothly. Okay, she's back to normal. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Umbridge would have a therapist's worst nightmare. The book broke John again. It certainly did. Oh, man, that was funny. She's a great character. She's such a good character. Smoothly now. I'm here to teach you a ministry-approved method that does not include inviting students to give their opinion on, matter, on matters about which they understand very little. Your previous teachers in this subject may have allowed you more license, but as none of them, with the possible exception of Professor Quirrell, who did last at least appear to have restricted himself to age-appropriate subjects, would have passed a ministry inspection. Yeah, Quirrell was a great teacher, said Harry loudly. There was just the minor drawback of him having Lord Voldemort sticking out the back of his head. This pronouncement was followed by one of the loudest silences Harry had ever heard. Then. I think another week's detention would do you some good, Mr. Potter, said Umbridge sleekly. End of section. Oh man, she called out Quirrell. She is a Death Eater. She's part of that, for sure. I mean, I've, I've always had the suspicion, but this is, it just confirms it. And he's getting another week of detentions. Something's gonna happen in, in these det detentions, I'm sure of it. Ah, uh, what do we got here? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna end here, I'm gonna end here. Uh, we, we went eight minutes over, over. Oh, sorry, this. The, the hiccups again. What what disorder do you focus on first? Oh, I love Harry. I need a marathon. You want a marathon of reading? Maybe I'll do it at the end of book th book five. Hey, there he is. There's that little guy. Ah, oh, oh, I get some nose kisses. That's nice. And and you get some dog gun. Hello. <laughs> All right, let's see, uh, any questions, any thoughts? Yeah, this is a, this has been a great chapter. A lot of different interactions, which I, I, li I like when characters who haven't interacted yet get to interact together. That's uh, it's a favorite of mine. No, keep going. Uh, I can't actually, because I'm going to a little uh, movie night. Where can I join the Patreon? It's in the, in the links of the, the description, it's in the descriptions of the videos. So get, go on any of one of my videos, there's a link in the description. Uh, thank you, Miguel. Dexter, yes, there is hope. Where is Hagrid? Where is Hagrid? He's got a mission. You know, all I've got to, got to go off is where the last book ended, right? So what mission could Hagrid complete? He couldn't do a spy mission. He's too big for that. You know, he's just too noticeable. You know, something with a brute force, maybe? What would he be doing? It's a mystery. It's a mystery to me. And you know, all of my other predictions have come true. Every single one of them. And you can go back, look at the videos, you know, double check those. You'll see they all came true. 
But I'm also a, a person who can just admit when he doesn't know. You know, I'm also that kind of person. So I admit I don't know about Hagrid. I don't have a premonition about ha Hagrid. It's like the one time in all the books where I don't know. And I, I'm, I'm okay with that, you know? I'm not flawless. <laughs> Remember when John used to go long? Oh, come on, John Ellis Bush Bush. I still go long. <laughs> come on, man. How would you handle having umbrage as a teacher? Oh boy, I would be umbrage. I'm all, I'm already a, a person who is not very good at um when people put down other people's dignity pu uh, dignity publicly. I'm already pretty bad at that, so I would not do well. Uh, how would you handle? What would you do if umbrage was inspecting your class? Yeah, I'd probably do the same thing Harry was doing. We get it, Jen, you're probably your friends. Ooh. So how do you think all the other teachers will react to their observations with Umbridge? So what are the other teachers again? Um, who do we have? Wait, didn't she go through most of them already? Who are the other teachers? And I hope that's not a leading question. Um, I literally, oh, McGonagall. McGonagall will call her out, for sure. McGonagall will call her out, for sure. Uh, why is Umbridge so mean? What is her deal? She's, uh, she's a Death Eater. No doubt. She's a Death Eater and a spy. Yeah, no doubt. Yes, you have second sight, John. It's a miracle. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Actually, me and Trelawney are probably related, you know? Maybe she's the one for me. Trelawney. Snope, McGonagall, Sprout. Oh, Snape. Snape. No, no, uh, Snape. She wasn't in Snape's class. Okay, so she's probably going to be another one in Snape's class. They're probably gonna team up on Harry. They're, they're gonna team up on Harry for sure. Sprout. Oh, Sprout. I don't know. Sprout. Sprout just says, does, she doesn't have enough character for me. I, I, yet. She hasn't been, other than just teaching a class. I don't know much about her character yet. Has she gone through everybody? I don't know. What do you, what do you, what you expect Umbridge to do? Um, she's, like I said, she's gonna be trying to remove as many teachers as she can so they can get spies in there. All right, everybody, that was a fun chapter, really fun chapter. We're gonna be back tomorrow at six o'clock. Join the Discord if you want some discussion and I'm gonna be adding some different channels, fun stuff. And also, if I can't make an evening, for, for example, if I can't make a read, if I have an appointment or something like that, I will be announcing that stuff on Discord. Not on Instagram anymore, but Discord is the official, official communication channel for me to give you those kind of announcements or tell you when I can or maybe when I'll be reading more or anything. So it'll, it'll be on there. Uh, check out my Patreon for some more readings and for some Dexter stickers. I'm uh, still thinking what else I can add to them. But uh, thank you for those who have already helped me out. I'm, I'm very, very, very appreciative of it. Uh, I hope you all have a good evening. I will see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And I want you to know you are loved, you have purpose, and you have value. Do not forget that. Do, do not forget to listen to others, to listen to uh, the, 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 the voices being spoken very loudly right now, uh, and to give people, to give the pe people the permission to move from six to seven instead of from zero to one. Give permission, people permission to change slowly if they can. All right, love you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>